Went back and looked at the Philadelphia Eagles. Went back and watched the game against Dallas in week three because I was just curious because the Cowboys were rolling along pretty well on offense. And I was interested to see how they were able to do that. I thought like they did a really nice job of handling uh, the Philadelphia Eagles front. You know, the the one guy they seemed to have the most problems with was Hargrave. Yeah, he's a big boy. Yeah, he's a strong man. Yeah, he's a big, strong man. And that was really because of what he was having to deal with with uh, with Connor Williams. That was that was a little bit of a problem for him. But with the Eagles defensively, though, I mean, they're dealing with several guys that have this COVID situation. Fletcher Cox being one of them. Uh, Avery, the linebacker. Singleton, another linebacker, and then Maddox, who is like their nickel. So, and the, but the, in this game, and when I watched, went back and watched, I was really impressed. The Cowboys did a really nice job. Again, ball going on edge, but they were able to attack the middle of this of this Eagles defense, and the way they did it was with draws, like sprint draws and things like that. So it's like invite up field. And then, you know, quick, just, you know, act like you're going to throw and then hand the ball off. And they were able to hit some Pollard, Zeke. Those guys actually had some some productive runs that way. So keep an eye on if Dallas is going to try and, and run the football. Maybe it'll be a little bit more about some of those things of like, okay, getting to come up the field and then taking advantage of how aggressive they are and then trying to pop some runs inside on these guys. And try not to hold. Yeah, they had a couple. Try to go ahead and not but, hold. But that's what I'm saying. They had some holding penalties in this game. They actually overcame them. And they overcame them. I know? remember that team. Yeah, which was. That team was fun. Yeah. I'll tell you this, though, in watching, because then I went back and watched the Eagles, too, against the, you know, the Eagles have problems playing against teams' tight ends. They don't cover tight ends very well. And and it's a little bit surprising to me. But, uh, yeah, th- this, this could be one of those games where you could see maybe they get some more traction with Dalton Schultz. I kind of feel like though too that these guys are going to play you in a in a way they played in that first game against the Cowboys played a ton of zone coverage and Dak pretty much ate them up. So I'm wondering he could if, read a defense in week three. Yeah, and now, uh, but I'm wondering <laughs> I'm wondering if they're going to if 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 in fact though that the Eagles are going to turn around and try and play a little bit more man coverage here. And see, you know, if in fact that uh, that they that if Dak can make the throws, we haven't seen him make. Uh, I mean, you know, there's been some games where it's just again he hasn't been able to to be accurate enough in certain situations when teams have played man coverage. And I'm wondering if the Eagles are going to give him that free access and routes and things like that. So Stevie Nelson's your corner, Darius Slay. Darius Slay is pretty much the ball hawk you kind of need to be worried about here a little bit for this defense. I'll be interested to see what happens in the nickel with no Maddox in that football game. So on the edge, you got to be able to block Sweat and and Barnett are the two primary rushers. And you got to, again, worry about the push from Hargrave in the middle. But the Cowboys did a really nice job. Like I said, the pocket was good in the protection they had in week three. And even the football team did a good job. Taylor Heineke throwing the football in that game at one point in time was like 13 of 14 throwing the football. Easy, dude. Easy. Well, he was Heineke, dude. Heineke, but easy. He, 13 of 14 throwing against the Eagles defense. That's my point. What a weird sounding Cowboys team. Like, it was months ago, mm-hmm. but that in that game you're drawing a scenario where it's like, look at this. They were you know, yeah. not able to really uh, shut down the great Taylor Heineke from throwing the ball. Yeah. They were able to run the ball great. Yeah. They're, like, it's just... No, it's, it, it, like I said, this is this is one of those things where I, I kind of feel like, though, that with when you watch the Eagles, it it's a lot of, it's a collection of some really good names. Yeah. But I feel like, though, the Cowboys at the time, the only offensive lineman they didn't have playing was Collins. Every, everybody else was in the lineup, and I mean they they hammered this this Eagles front with with both Zeke and though with Pollard with some really good runs. So that's what you're gonna you know if you're going into this game, maybe they can find a way to get the running game going with the uh, with the five with the five starters up front, and we'll see if uh, if in fact that uh, or maybe that was just a mirage that we saw in week three. Defensively, uh, excuse me, offensively. They're dealing with some COVID issues at center. I tried to reach out to my guy up there, and he didn't get back to me. 
and because I was curious at how they were going to play center. Jason Kelsey's on the uh, COVID list, and then uh, Nate Herbert is uh, on the uh, is on the COVID list too. He's the starter at right guard. So I'm interested to see how they're going to kind of move things around. They might move Landon Dickerson to center and then play this Jack Anderson, who was a seventh-round pick. They might move him uh, to uh, to guard. Maybe the, the, the Andre Dillard played last time. Mayaletta missed the game the previous time for uh, for the Eagles in that one, and Andre Dillard started, and you were able to, to do some things against him. But, yeah, no Dallas Goddard. He's on the list. And, you know, the, but watching this team now play against the, and they were a little bit more wide open against you in week three, throwing the football. This team now plays a lot tighter with their formations. So you get a lot more 12 personnel stuff. So it was really, but you got both your tight ends are on the COVID list, Goddard and then stole the two tight ends are on the list. So will they go, will they play more 11 personnel if both those guys are out? We'll see. But the way they're running the football is it's a lot more tighter formations, wings. They're pulling guys. They're using the tight ends as blockers at the point of attack. So, like, Dallas Goddard will come, snap the ball. They're handing it off inside, and then the tight end's blocking at the point of attack. And then they're just trying to kind of mash on you with this, with the size that they have with Maialata and Dickerson and those guys. And Lane Johnson's not the biggest guy but he's really athletic, so they're kind of working on that a little bit. At receivers, they've got everything in place. Uh, Smith is the guy you really, really have to worry about uh, with the the deep threat ball and stuff like that. You have to worry about him on the sideline stuff. He's one of these guys that catches the ball. We've talked about him from Alabama. Mm -hmm. We talked about how well he catches the football and then the run-after catch stuff, so got to be alert for that. Uh, this Kez Watkins is like their, really their second best receiver because Jalen Rager really hasn't done a whole hell of a lot for him. You don't have to say that out loud, though. TCU, man, he's a sweet well, kid. Well, he, he's, he's had his problems. <laughs> we thought he was going to be pretty good. Yeah, I did too. But Kez Watkins, number 16, has kind of been the secondary guy uh, that they've gone to. So it's going to be about covering Smith and then Watkins. And then, but you're going to have to deal with a running game here. You really are. You're going to have to deal now. Boston Scott's on the COVID list, and so is Jordan Howard's on the COVID list. So that means Miles Sanders. But they got really three guys that can run the football. They like to throw the football to that Boston Scott. Again, if he's not in the lineup, uh, you know, we'll see if the ball goes to Sanders and stuff on the screens and and uh, and the under down the check down stuff. But it's a it's a they they figured out how to not make Jalen Hurts have to play. Because they run the ball and they <laughs> they mash you up front and they just they you know, they try and make it as many as easy as they can to convert third downs with manageable down and distance stuff and not put him in second or third and longs and play that way. He has thrown thirty passes in a game once in yeah. the last eight games. Yeah, it was four wow. of their first five. And in the last eight, they're like, nah, not so much. Not so much. Not so much. But they've done they've done a nice job of really not making him have to play. And I and I think he's okay with that. I think he's okay with the runs and stuff that he has. You're gonna, you know, they, they, obviously they're gonna see what Arizona, the success Arizona had pulling, especially late in that football game, when they were pulling, you know, when when uh, Kyler Murray was pulling the football and running and stuff like that. If the Cowboys again, it's about discipline. It's about staying on the. You know, staying in your spot and making a play, and you know if they if they don't, well, Jalen Hurts is more than capable of running the football. If they can make him throw the football, then there's your there's your your path for victory right there. Well, that's what we need, right? Uh, what yeah. are, uh, you know, move up in the so overall, based on how many players you think they're still going to have available, is that still a team that you think is uh, a, a competent? Uh, could well, just an average Cowboys performance uh, knock that team down, or yeah. are they going to have to play well? Yeah, I, I think where it helps you is their defensive players. Like, not having Fletcher Cox, I think, hurts them. I think not having the nickel Maddox would hurt them. But they've got their starting corners. They've got their starting safeties. They're down those linebackers. But, the you know, like I say, they've got the pass rushers, and they've got the middle guy with Hargraves. So I still feel like it's kind of one of those teams that could play well enough on defense. Uh, I, I would be a little concerned about him if I was their offensive line with their center being out and their right guard being out. That might be a little bit some give them some trouble. But if they're gonna if they're gonna try and run the ball, like I said, 
they've used a lot of 12 personnel and then both their tight ends are on that COVID list, that might be something that they have to think about doing a little bit differently. 